Good morning, good morning, everybody. Power 7 Podcast, in effect. It's your boy, the almighty Nicodemus. Here we go again this morning. Today, I want to just do a little brief timeline, history timeline on hip-hop. Since we're celebrating hip-hop turning 50, so says the mainstream. So I just want to do a little brief history lesson out here for some of you who may not know. Some of you may know more than me. Uh, hip-hop is one of those things that the history has uh, always been a little shaky. Because so many participated in it, you know, and only end up being documented at, at a certain time. Um, I want to give a shout out to Michael Wayne, Michael Wayne TV, now known as Culture TV on YouTube. Check them out. Also, want to give a shout out to uh, Jay Kwan, the Foundation, also off of YouTube. But what I want to talk about is hip hop, <clears throat> possibly, really being maybe fifty three years old. Maybe 54 when he got his start. 69, 70. When hip hop got his start, Bronxdale Projects, um, where there were DJs playing <clears throat> in that projects for the people in those projects playing in the park. One of those DJs known was Disco King Mario. Now, Mario was a DJ. He was a young guy, maybe 19, 20. And he was also a black space leader. <clears throat> and he was a major figure in, the, in in those projects and in that and in that group of the black space, that gang. Mario played records. He played the breaks. And he played the breaks. He played though that music that had the breaks in it. And the B-Boys the young, and they were young guys talking about teen, young teenagers 13, 12, 14, 15 you know hip hop is young started by young people they would dance to those to those break beats at that time it wasn't called break dancing and it was a form of break dancing it ended up evolving into what we know as break dancing now but it was a different type of thing they had going on. Like I said, uh, shout out to Culture TV. You can go there and hear a uh, original Soul Sonic Force member, Charlie Rock, explain what those dances was and kind of give you an example of the dances that they were actually doing at the time, which end up becoming break, break dance. But those guys would do those dances at the time, and they were called spade dances. And this is really what they say is really what's what when the birth of hip hop started. It's when these guys, the B boys, would actually come out and do those dances to those breaks. But they weren't called B boys because of the breaks. They were called B boys because they was representing the Bronx and they was representing those Bronxdale projects. Now, as far as the DJing goes, some people would say that there were some Brooklyn DJs, one in particular, Grandmaster Flowers. That were these guys were actually not him in particular. There's other ones, but his is one that you'll hear ring out a lot. That they are the guys who started hip hop. Now the pushback to that is those guys were not playing those funk records at the time. They were playing more disco records, love is the message, things of that nature. They were, they were spinning that type of stuff. They were playing outside as well. So now I'm not taking that away from them. But the difference between them and what those guys were doing in hip hop is they did not rock with those guys in the Bronx. They made fun of them for their equipment. They didn't. They made fun of them because of the way they dressed. They didn't play the music that they played. They didn't like the way they danced. Which we all know that form of dancing and that and those break beats from that type of music is is a, what makes up hip hop. Part of what makes up hip hop. But the DJing aspect, yes, they did have, they are definitely an influence on it. They uh, influenced, I mean, Grandmaster Flash. He's Grandmaster Flash because of Grandmaster Flowers. 
which brings me to my next point. So while these guys are already doing this in Broxdale projects, Cool Hurt sees them doing it. Now there's an interview on YouTube where Cool Hurt talks about it. Where he talks about, hey, I was going, I was going, they were already doing their thing. I was seeing it going on, but he saw when the B-Boys got down, which brought him to this thing called the merry-go-round, which now we call loops. <laughs> He did his thing at Zedwick Avenue at the at the youth center in the projects down in the Bronx. Now how and what he was doing, he was putting those brakes on for those guys to do their thing, to do their dances. That's why they called it the first hip hop party. But really, he was just expounding on something that was going on. He saw something key like that, that these kids were already doing. He's like, well, let me just do something where I'm just throwing that part on because that's the part they're really getting down to. Which brings up the next person to take what Hurt was doing and take it a step further, which is Grandmaster Flash. Now, people say Flash took what, say that people like Flash and some of the other D, early DJs say Hurt would just throw shit on. Like he wasn't really doing no blending or no mixing. Now this is from their mouth, not from mine. Hurt would just throw shit on. So what Flash did is took what Hurt was doing with those breaks and pretty much did an early thing of what we call looping or maybe some might call beat juggling. For those DJs out there, y'all can check on that. And that's what Flash started doing. And that was his expansion of hip hop culture and adding to it. Now there's a, another DJ one from Uptown in Harlem who a lot of people consider he's not hip hop. And once again, I want to say about some of these early DJs that played in those discos, you know, they weren't messing with that crowd. And this is the reason why they get, you get the pushback from some of those guys back then and say, nah, they wasn't hip hop. You know what I'm saying? We try to show up with gym shoes on and, you know, we want to dance or go down to the floor and get down and they didn't like that. You know, they used to come, they used to say, don't come in here with all that hippity hoppity bullshit. Like they say, hip hop was really a derogatory term used to describe those kids at the time. And DJs like the DJ Flowers or the, or the DJ Hollywoods at that time, it's how they describe those guys. So that's why they get a lot of times pushback. Like y'all wasn't down on what we were doing, what we were shaping. Y'all didn't like it. Y'all went with the graffiti writers, the break dancers. Y'all didn't like none of that stuff when it first started. So. That's why a lot of them get the they're not hip hop pushback. But DJ Hollywood used to rhyme, and he's an influence on a lot of the rappers. Uh, cool Herc had a MC Coke the Rock, but he wasn't really a rhyme and rhyme. You know, he would just call out things. That was Coke the Rock. DJ Hollywood, these are the first rappers of what we know is hip hop. Guys that take what they were doing to the next level and expand it were Billy Mel, Grandmaster Cass, and Cool Modi. Those three guys are what they call the Trinity when it comes to this thing is, that we know is rap, it's part of hip hop. Those guys are the three guys who take rapping to the next level at that time. Now mind you, we're not even we're still in the 70s. We haven't even moved out of it yet. But um, this is my part one I'm talking about the early beginnings of hip hop and where we go. I know we've heard the story before but I wanted to throw the Mario aspect in there and the Spade dancing there for those who may not know of where the evolution of the culture and the art form may have come from. It just did appear out of nowhere. There was a community of people, young people, that were doing this thing before Cool Earth came along. Um, so, going to end this. This is going to be a part one. Maybe I'll do a two and a three, depending on how far I want to go with it. But this is your boy. Oh, my, you make the Davis. I was seven. I'm out.